All right, so today we're gonna look at uh, this question, 1,197 minimum night moves. So we have a chessboard with, uh, which is infinitively large. Uh, there's no boundary here. Uh, we can move freely on, on this board. And we have a night piece at the, the location 00, zero and uh, we wanna get to some target uh, location XY here. And we want to find the minimum number of steps we need. So it's a shortest path search kind of question. Uh, so if we consider this board as a, as, a, as a graph, every cells in here is a node. These nodes are connected uh, by the, uh, according to the moveset of this knight. So the node 00, zero is connected to, directly connected to uh, node 1, 2, and uh, uh, 2, 1, uh, 2, minus 1, and uh, minus 1, minus 2, etc. So, so we are looking for a uh, shortest path to move this uh, uh, move from the node zero zero towards the target x y. So that leads us to uh, quite naturally thinking about the BFS search because that's usually associated with uh, shortest path searches in graphs. And uh, so we're gonna just gonna start coding that up and uh, uh, keep improving on that, uh, uh, you know, from there. So. Let's uh, let's code this. So we're gonna have a memory uh, hash map to store the. Uh, basically, uh, you can imagine that uh, we we are putting numbers on the board. Uh, so every uh, for every cells on the board, we're gonna put the, the number of steps in need to uh, move the knight over there. Uh, in the end, we just need to return that. Uh, uh, after after we visit the target cell, we just return that number we draw on the on the board. So this memory, uh, this memo here is uh, for that purpose. Uh, obviously, in the very first, uh, we will have the, this original location to be marked with zero. And uh, in the end, we're just going to return um, the x, y location that we want. And uh, since that, uh, we are doing BFS, uh, level by level traversal in this graph, we're going to get a queue. Initially, there's uh, we will look. We're starting with the origin location. So we're gonna do a loop. Uh, why we still haven't marked the target location yet? We need to explore the cell, the the uh, the cells, the squares. That's one layer um, um, beyond what we have already explored. So the condition is that. Uh, whether there is not a such key um, in the memo, then uh, we should do a one one more round of uh, exploration. So initially, it's zero here, and um, uh, for every location in the queue, we're gonna try all the different eight uh, possible moves that you can do. Um, And for the for the next the possible locations, we're gonna try to mark them with the. Um, of course, we don't want to go back to the place we already visited. For that, we're just gonna, uh, you know, increment the number to be what it, larger than what it should be. So uh, uh, we're gonna uh, that logic is gonna be encapsulated in this uh, helper function. So. Uh, those uh, double counting will be filtered out. So uh, if that's the case, we can safely just set the uh, step count to, for that for the next location here. And and we will re we will uh, remember to explore the further uh, for for that next location in the next round. So all there left is to code this uh, helper function. Um, so we grab the x and y's. Mm. For all the eight possible moves, uh, we're gonna do a filter, and uh, if it's valid, we just return year that uh, to our 
uh, just here at that location. So this is a given location. Try to move the knight uh, to the eight possible moves uh, next locations. And if we find already a number marked on that cell, then we don't go there because all we're gonna end up with doing if we actually go there is to increment the number on the board. So uh, we're gonna skip that. Otherwise, we just wanna go there and uh, mark the board with the step count and uh, uh, remember us uh, just add that to the queue so that we remember to explore even further in the next one so that's pretty much the uh, brute force uh, very straightforward naive solution for uh, bfs code for for this question uh, so let's say uh, yeah we have a, i have two test cases here so let's try to run this uh, it works so it should work i tested it before um, Yeah, it's working and uh, just just super slow. So we're gonna do some improvements. Uh, so so far, the BFS solution only utilized the, the move set, um, the eight directions. The the properties above this move set is not utilized in this uh, solution here. So when you look at the, this uh, eight uh, arrows here, you'll find that. Uh, uh, th there is a symmetry here. We can, if we treat this board as a piece of paper, if we flip it, uh, um, either horizontally or vertically or even diagonally, the arrows gonna, uh, you know, they gonna um, overlap each other after you flip the, uh, do the flip. So for the search and problem, that is just telling us, for the no for any given node in here, we can always uh, just convert it. You know, by doing some flips to put that onto the, uh, you know, let's say that for convenience we're gonna put this onto the um, upper 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 right uh, quadrant. And to be more specific, since we can also flip it diagonally, uh, we can just put it into this uh, uh, upper upper right triangle here, um, with the y's be greater than x, greater than or equal to x. So it's a uh, x uh, greater than 0, y greater than 0, and uh, y is uh, uh, greater than x into that kind of a, a triangle corn or corn kind of shaped uh, areas. So we can uh, pretty much by doing that we can uh, reduce the problem by 8 uh, in, in fraction, uh, 1 eighth. Uh, so instead of searching the whole board, uh, you know, we, when we do level wise traversal BFS, we, we kind of like doing uh, drawing circles and circles and circles like a lollipop kind of shape uh, but if we restrict ourselves to a corn it's like uh, uh, you know the problem becomes uh, uh, to one eighth of the original so let's just do some um, that that's just require really few lines of code to uh, do that conversion so for the uh, target we want to map it to that uh, uh, triangle kind of a section and we want y to be greater than x. So this is uh, take care of that. And uh, in the get next, uh, we have some filter that we can do actually. Uh, so if the x and y, uh, if the next location ever go uh, too far away from that uh, triangle kind of area, if it's uh, uh, two with a padding of two, um, around the tri uh, triangle shape, uh, we, will, we will actually um, don't consider that move because you have to go out and go back into the triangle. Uh, you can just uh, be better, stay within that triangle and the move that's going to be guaranteed to be shorter. So translating into code is just some uh, value testing. So 
yeah, that's pretty much uh, the the reason for adding. This is uh, for um, the the with two pad for the uh, x uh, x greater than zero. This is a pad is a two version of a y greater than zero, and. Uh, uh, this is uh, from from the upper top right actually. So since that uh, we know the target, we don't want to overshoot too much and backtracking, because that just gonna cause more uh, number of steps needed. Uh, so this is uh, uh, yeah. So with with this uh, the, the this line here is the uh, you know the uh, identity line y equal to x uh, with uh, two padding. So with this uh, two line here, we restrict ourselves to be a more tighter triangle to search for the uh, to do the BFS search. So this should uh, cut down the time time run, running time by like uh, one eighth. Uh, so uh, even more, even probably even more. So yeah, uh, consider this with the five thousand one. It's like uh, yeah, it's uh, it's more than tenfold actually. Uh, so that's uh, that's one of the solution. Uh, I guess another one is uh, we can do uh, two two BFS. We can uh, do one BFS from the center, the and the the other BFS is doing that from the target, and then they will meet in uh, they will converge in the middle. Uh, I guess it will be slightly faster because when you think about uh, um, uh, Think about uh, this BFS. Uh, each level, you're gonna have more more locations to explore. So with two BFS, uh, um, they're gonna reach into half of the time, probably approximately half of the time. If you just do a one direction one directional BFS, so the size of the problem it's uh, much smaller. Um, yeah. So let's let let's do that. It's uh, it's quite easy once you have this uh, one directional one. Uh, it's pretty much just duplicate everything. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have two two sets of numbers marked on the board. Uh, one is number of steps to go there from source. The the other one is the number of steps to go there from the target. And uh, we're gonna have two sets uh, two queues. Uh, the source one is uh, initially with zero zero of, of course, and the target one is uh, from the target. And this get next uh, does not need to be modified actually, so the condition should be changed to be. Um, let's just, let's just uh, use some condition inside the loop to test whether we reached or not, uh, converged or not. Uh, so this is uh, BFS uh, from source. So that uh, we are basically operating on the. Um, memos. Uh, oh, sorry. This is source. So we operating on uh, our memory and uh, queue. Uh, what we need to test is uh, once we examine one location, we want to see whether this location is the in the uh, you know in the other hash map. If if it's in there, we uh, it's the first time we actually. Converge. So we touched each other, so that we we just return the two numbers uh, added together. And uh, for the uh, the other directional BFS, uh, the other the other one, we just copy and. Uh, Change whatever that is, that is S to T and whatever is T to S. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, um, yeah, let me let me see. Let me try if it it's okay. Uh, memo is not. Oh, okay. Uh, we need to modify this here. So in order to do this deduplication, I'm taking the memory. So uh, we, we need to add one more additional argument here. So now it should work. Uh, yeah. So uh, it doesn't really change the time, time running time for all the test cases, but uh, I guess in theory it should be more efficient. 
And in terms of uh, writing actual code, you, you, all we do is just copy and paste. And uh, I guess there are better ways of doing this. Um, mine is just uh, pretty mechanical. It'll just copy, paste, and uh, change S to T, T to S. Uh, that, that's pretty much it. So um, let, let's think about uh, what, what we, why this is probably going to be better. Uh, so there is actually a notion of direction in this search, right? Uh, we always know that where the target is. Um, for BFS, it's like blindly to explore all the nodes in the level. Um, so, uh, so even though that's usually associated with, uh, um, you know, shortest pass, um, for, for that reason, it's usually that we don't have uh, anything that's provided us with information about uh, uh, where the target is, uh, so that we do this BFS. The 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 thing we want to minim uh, restrict is to go too deep before we backtrack, the, the, because the too deep might cost time. That's the uh, usual reason we go with uh, BFS. But for this case, since that we know the direction to get to the target, or if you think the other way around, for a given target we know we want to get to zero zero, then. Um, doing DFS actually may be uh, quite reasonable as well. So I'm uh, gonna uh, just come uh, delete this and uh, code the DFS code. Um, I guess I'm just gonna uh, keep this and delete everything else. Uh, for memo, um, I'm gonna have uh, at least the uh, the initial state here. Y and return accent Y and in the end I should just return DFS um, accent Y. So we're starting with the target and uh, we try to uh, find a way back to the home and uh, we can put the X and Y into the upper right uh, kind of a triangle area and uh, um, I guess we need to, uh, let, let's draw some numbers here to see uh, what exactly is the base case here, but because zero zero does not seem to be covering enough. So let's uh, note the number of rows and number of columns here. Um, so this is zero and um, uh, two, uh, just just try to fill the board manually uh, at least for a few examples uh, for one two uh, we take one for uh, two one is also sorry it's also one to get to uh, so let's just pad this with uh, unknown x for unknowns yet um, so once we know these two locations are one, we can go to uh, one step up and the two step left. We know this is two, and uh, from and we know this is two as well. Um, that's uh, one step left and the two step up from this one here. Uh, to get to here, we need to. Um, probably go to here and then come back. So this is two. And for the sy symmetry kind of uh, reasoning, this is two as well. To get to here is a little bit tricky. Uh, we think we can go here, then go go down. Uh, just imagine we have a location here and then come back. So it's a, it's a three. Um, and and we only worried about uh, the um, the triangle kind of section. So let's actually pad this board. Um, I, I wish I had some join capacity so that uh, this looks uh, a little bit nicer. Um, so, yeah. So what's this number? Oh, th this, uh, this number is uh, mm, we we don't really care. Do we care? 
Yes, we care. It's uh, it's a three here, and um, just gonna pad this board from here. We don't care anything that's uh, beyond this, um, and we have some target uh, that's uh, within this area. Let's say we have a target somewhere over here. Um, the I guess the observation is that uh, for every node here, uh, every node inside this area, uh, we can just uh, the the shortest path to get back to home is to still try to go within this board and uh, um, and to try to go go back down here uh, in the fastest way. For for every location, it's uh, it's almost like always that. Uh, this is two. Let me, let me just fill a, a, a few more numbers so that uh, it's it's more concrete, I guess. Uh, so this is three, uh, two, x, x, x. So this is uh, two as well, and we're gonna have a divider line there. Mm. So this is three. Uh, this is probably four. I should jar it here. Um, yeah, it's it become really tedious to actually draw the number beyond um, four, but uh, but I guess what I try to say, what I'm trying to say is uh, the initial states are the this four number here, uh, zero, three, two, three here, uh, because for every other number you can see two, it's uh, we can move there from from, um, uh, yeah, we can move to this location and from from origin and go to this two here. Uh, if you're looking at this number, uh, 2 here, uh, why is that a 2? It, it should be a 3, right? Um, yeah, but obviously it's uh, quite easy to mess up the numbers in the board if you try to manually do it. It requires a lot of uh, detail, pay attention to detail. But um, what I'm trying to say is that uh, for any other location outside this small rectangle kind of area, uh, you can always uh, go there from something that's uh, uh, already calculated uh, um, in, within this uh, uh, triangle kind of area. Uh, just pick a, pick some random numbers and see if you can get there. That's it's almost a guarantee. Um, so the initial state should actually expand that to 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 include that uh, this four little thing here. So one one is. Uh, uh, two here, one zero and uh, zero one. They are symmetric. They are both three. Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, uh, if this is uh, in memory, I just just return that. Otherwise, I will I will do I call this uh, recursively. Um, Uh, there, for any given location inside this this area, uh, we want to uh, kind of a greedily go go back down here. So we can either uh, go uh, go from go go to here, or we can go here, and then the number uh, we take whichever is uh, smaller. Uh, for for if we are kind of out of boundary, uh, if we go left, we we just pick the opposite direction. Anyway, the 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 reason is that. Uh, um, it's going to be equivalent because if we go out of boundary, that number has to be um, mm, that number has to be uh, equal to to this number here. So um, 
if we ever needs to be uh, to go into the negatory negative uh, territory uh, by a jump, uh, we can always find the same number uh, in this uh, upper triangle here. So that's that's why we take absolute value. Uh, so there are two moves moves possible. So we just uh, take the minimum between these two. Uh, and for every number, we just do the uh, absolute value to take advantage of the symmetry property. And uh, we also add one for the actual jump. So that's pretty much uh, the DFS version. Um, it's important to realize that uh, uh, this ABS absolute value clipping is going to clip the next step uh, within this uh, upper triangle here and uh, it's going to take whichever is the smallest and go there uh, the the reason for this is going to be faster is this there's a notion of direction it's uh, for BFS we just blindly scanning you know circle by circle uh, like lollipop but here, uh, we know the direction. We know sort of like the gradients uh, to drop to zero zero. So we just take advantage of that. Um, so let's see if it works. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, much much faster. Uh, I I believe there is a more mathematical uh, constant time operation. Uh, it's kind of like uh, you can directly actually calculate uh, this uh, number of steps. But I I think that's a a little bit beyond uh, what's expected in a limited time of uh, interview, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty much the solutions I'm I'm um, talking through today. Um, I think the BFS, if you do the uh, bi-directional and with some kind of uh, reasonable pruning, it should be good enough. DFS, uh, uh, it's good too, um, but it might be a little bit more difficult to directly think about this. But once you do the bidirectional and be able to reasoning about the upper diagonal kind of uh, sections, uh, I think for uh, realizing this is not um, uh, out of a possibility. So yeah, so that's uh, uh, the question today.